Well, that was certainly more exciting and dramatic than it probably should have been. Evelyn Vienne plays the hero, just her second headed goal for country. Last time she did that, they were playing in Spain against Morocco in an international friendly. But Canada survived by the skin of their teeth. It wasn't pretty, Jordan. There's going to be a lot that that woman right there is not particularly thrilled about. But at the end of the day, they get just enough to live to fight another day. They're now two matches away from winning the Gold Cup. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're in the semifinals. I, I think that's obviously the, the silver lining, but there's a lot to unpack. I think first half, uh, Canada played well, just couldn't finish and weren't clinical enough, Jess. But second half was, was dreadful, but they found a way. You guess you can look at the free kick. Viennes comes in and, and gets that header. It's a beautiful header. But look at the chances and the shots for Canada tonight. You think that one goal. I mean, they could have scored so many, Jess. Yeah, I mean, those are the performances that end up, you know, hurting you when you're playing against against a good opponent because you're not going to get, I don't know how many shots they had. It was 20. 20. That's a 20 lot shots. of shots. Uh, you know, not, you're not going to get those against an opponent like the U.S. So I think they do need to really clean it up. It does need to be a lot more clinical. Obviously, they scored. It was a nice goal at that, right? You got to give credit where credit's due. But overall, it was a, it was a pretty rough performance. Yeah, and that goal is going to be could be the moment. It could be the performance. Could be everything. It's a tournament saver for the Canadians. But it is are going to be our Gatorade performance of the match. Just spare a thought for that gorgeous little clip ball in from Jesse Fleming. It's perfectly weighted. Costa Rica is incredibly deep on it, defending Jordan. But Bian gets it done. Yeah, that for me is obviously the the only. Well, I won't say only, but the, the biggest mistake of the match tonight for, for Costa Rica. I thought they had a great performance, but if you were to take it and do it over, I don't know why that, that line, the defensive line, isn't on top of the 18. Um, just having them so deep, it allows Viennes. Or also getting them wide as well, right? Like, they were just spread out. Usually you want to see a compact defensive line and higher away from your goal. But um, that was that one decision that, that had the opening for Canada. So let's do some housekeeping, um, and then we're going to show the, the moment that Canada stayed in this game. Uh, Olivia Smith, I saw a lot of people online and even texting to ask, she was out with concussion protocol tonight. She would have seemed like a logical substitution in extra time. Listed on the bench, they were going to see if she was a game-time decision. Clearly, she wasn't ready to go, not rushing concussion protocol. But she certainly could have been a, a player that could have made an impact in this game. The, the reason that we're here and the reason that this conversation is more upbeat than it is, Jess, is because Kaylin Sheridan had one of the biggest saves of her career. If not for a toe, if not for a stud on her boot, this is the worst loss in program history. It's our all-state save of the match. But this is where goalkeepers make their money. Yeah, I mean, we described, we described this earlier. This is poor defending on Canada's part, but Kaylin Sheridan came up huge. This is a great save by her to be able to bounce back after getting, you know, not much action in this game. To be able to do that shows her quality as a keeper. So, you know, this is a this is a huge moment for them. Everyone fell asleep in the box except Kaylin. She was the only one anticipating the shot coming, anticipating a big moment. And you see that that's outstretched, nearly doing the splits. Phenomenal save. Yeah, if Canada goes on to win this tournament, they can absolutely have this moment to thank. And the, the other thing is that late in extra time, Costa Rica certainly made it interesting. And Kaylin Sheridan, for as good as she was on that save, Jess, if this shot that we're about to show you is on target, it's in the net. And this is like the final minutes of the second half of extra time. Yeah, this was a scary moment. We all jumped up here in our seats to be able to see them come back this late in the game would have been horrible. So this is obviously, you know, a good play, good footwork here kind of turns Zdorsky a little bit inside out. But to be able to connect with that and potentially have that go in the back of the net would have been horrible for Canada. And this is not an easy thing to do. She put her body on the line to be able to get on that and make contact before it actually hit hit the ground. That, that's not an easy thing to do. you got to give credit where credit's due. Costa Rica ran their tails off tonight. They played the perfect game. They ran and they worked and they fought. They did brawl ball. They stuck together. There was nine sometimes in the box. But they didn't just do it for 90 minutes. You have to go and play 120 minutes. Their coach, this squad, you have to give them credit for the way that they went about their business because that's not easy to go and play a game and you have 30% possession. They were just running, def defending for, for, for each other. And, and it showed. And for them, that, they were that close. 
to tying it up and to going to penalty shootout. Well, we expected the bracket to look like this. We didn't expect it necessarily to be this dramatic to get there, but Canada advances. They will play the winner of tomorrow's quarterfinal between the Americans and the Colombians. The other quarterfinal happening tomorrow, of course, is going to dictate the other side of the bracket because in about, let's say, 10 minutes' time, we're going to find out who advances from that side of the bracket to find a semi-finalist. Evelyn Vienne of La Sienne Lorette, Quebec, is the hero tonight. Let's have some reflections from her post-match right now. Evelyn, you've had to be patient and, and wait for your opportunity at this tournament. How did that goal feel? Uh, that felt really good. I think going in overtime wasn't our goal, but we didn't want PK and we got a goal and it was, it was great, great feeling. Is it fair to say that was a real fight to get past that Costa Rica team? Yeah, credit to them. They were really compact. They didn't let many chances. We need to be more efficient at the in front of goal, but overall we learned, we moved the ball and we have a great opponent coming on Wednesday. Do you think you learn something about this team in games like this where you do have to go through a bit of adversity to get the result? Of course, I think it was a great opponent. We just need to be patient, find a good moment to score. I think overall we are going to learn a lot of how we can improve with the ball maybe and just close this game earlier, but it's, it's a good feeling to go in the semis. How do you describe that Kaylin Sheridan save at the end of normal time? I mean, that's just Kaylin. I think it's typical. I just When she's in goal, I know we can get a clean sheet and she does some miracle. And yeah, it was amazing. Congratulations, Evelyn. Well done. Thank you. Well, thank you to Evelyn and Ollie. That's just Kaylin is right. Look at these numbers Ooh. at full time. That is not a typo. 39 shots to five. 10 of them on target from the Canadians to just one from Costa Rica. Two thirds of possession from the Canadians. But if when we start nitpicking, and we will, 13 corners to one. They outfouled Costa Rica, Canada. That shows the level of frustration in this game. And I mean, they made the midfield compact as well. Canada only 62% passing accuracy, some desperation late in the game. But I think this is a textbook example. And it's not just right now, Jordan. It's, it's years in the past. Canada in its various iterations, cannot beat a low block easily. They get frustrated, they get compact, they start making mistakes. Let's show you some of the examples of it, but try and uh, help us understand, Jordan, because I actually am optimistic about the semifinal. It's these are the games that trip them up. These are the games, and, and rightfully so, right? I think it's hard to break down a team um, who defends with life. Look in the box right there. It's just a quick, quick count, right? That's literally nine players that you have. I think there's only one Costa Rican player that's, that's up. The rest are defending. Um, they, there you go. That's the 10th one right there, number nine. So this is just a, a team that was locked in and said, look, we don't have to go and attack today, but we're going to frustrate you. And that's what they did to Canada in these moments. Yeah, you get a flick on here. They, they start playing. They're fighting in the midfield. But Canada just seemed to get in these situations. Even here, watch. Shoot Jan Rose. Shoot the ball. Shoot. <laughs> but look, they're ready. They, if, if one player does again, the next one was ready to... to to block and, and to be in a position to just frustrate. And that's what I'm saying, like Costa Rica today, could, they couldn't really do much else. They couldn't really do that much better. They defended with their lives. And Canada just had that little bit of class in that moment to, to step up and get the three points. I'm still workshopping this, Jess, but I, I feel like in these moments for Canada, I'm saying they need to make faster decisions, but also be more patient. Like, how do you unlock a low block like that? Canada might not see one for the rest of the tournament, but they almost didn't advance in this match because of their inability to find success there. Yeah, well, you know, you saw it quite a bit, their patience, their lack of patience, rather. They were shooting into people's legs. You know, Costa Rica was putting their body in the line, so kudos to them, but there were opportunities to just, you know, be able to swing it back around and switch the play. They were trying to force it. They were trying to shoot. And then there were moments where they should have shot and they were taking extra touches, extra touches. It's very difficult when you have four people around you every time you take a touch on the ball and not just four people that are there, four people that are willing to put their body right. on the line and stop, stop the ball from going in the back of the net. So I do think that they need to play those quick one-two passes. That's where they were finding their success. And shoot. Shoot when you have the opportunity. Don't take the extra touch when it's not on. And if it's not on, you know, recycle the ball. Play your game. They're, they're an intelligent team. They have the quality in the players. So I just think they need, really need to utilize their strengths. So tomorrow on One Soccer, it will be must-see viewing. USA, Colombia, it all gets underway at 7.15 p.m. Central Time. Two very different types of opponents. Bev Priestman told us she's expecting the physicality of the Americans to give them the edge in this match. But either way, Canada's fate, or at least their road to the W Gold Cup, will be decided tomorrow night in the other quarterfinal on One Soccer. 
Jordan Wilson, whoever comes out of this game, Canada is going to have to regroup. They're probably quite lucky that they played tonight, not tomorrow, because they're going to need that extra day to try and recover because that's a grind. That's that's the antithesis of what Bev Priestman wanted. You asked her, I think, almost not in jest, but when we spoke to her yesterday, like, Bev, what's your ideal plan here? Get a goal early, rotate some players <laughs> through halftime substitution. So you said, I'd love to have that luxury. She said, I want to give Kanisha Buchanan some rest. Didn't get the chance to do that. Mm -hmm. So with all of these factors, what's your level of confidence heading into the semifinal? Uh, I think I think it's going to be a totally different game, to be fair. So I'll start there. I don't think there will be a low block. I think it will be an open game, which will suit Canada, because you have to defend, but the same way that you're absorbing pressure, hopefully you can go out and get the likes of Leon and Lacasse running at Lawrence, running at players, as opposed to trying to break them down, because that is difficult to do. My confidence, just because this game is so fresh, I would say that Canada needs to be the best version of themselves, and we haven't seen that in this tournament. Rightfully so, they've had three easier games, but like tonight was a game where you're expecting goals and they just weren't sharp. So they have to pick it up if they want to beat Colombia or the U.S. in the semifinals, because now it's gut check time. Mm. Now, it's, now it's, you have to show what you're made of, and you have to be the best version of yourself to get a win, because both of those teams, the U.S. or Colombia, will hurt you if you have a performance like tonight. Yeah, and I think Canada really needs to utilize their partnerships on the flanks. We haven't, we didn't see that very much no. today, and that's where they've been thriving. People have been struggling. The overload is constantly causing their opponents trouble. So I would really like to see them bring that into their next matchup. Yeah, do we think about those partnerships in the way that the team was set up today? Like, this is where that shape, Jordan, can be costly when they're, when they're playing a more passive team because it's the wingbacks just almost get hemmed or they're too far out, and then it's just perimeter passing, perimeter passing. And then uh, I still, like, look at that game, and one of the things that sticks out for me is Chloe Lacasse makes a gorgeous run into the middle. We were going to show up before we went to extra time. And for club, she's shooting the ball. She's probably scoring. In this, like sluggish game she almost has that reluctance like it's not the perfect shot she's not going to take it do you think that free-flowing style helps encourage them to take a bit a few more risks yeah I think so but I think also too I think one of the hardest things as a footballer is doing things at the right time you could say sport in general mm. I think there there are many times tonight where you're supposed to pass and there was an extra touch you're supposed to shoot with confidence and you want to make that sexy reverse cut pass like, I just think tonight the wrong decision was made more often than not. Hopefully, the rhythm of the game in the semifinals, the intensity forces the Canadians to make the right decision because that happens in games as well, Jess, where you don't have a time to take three touches. You just get it and you pass it. And there's a rhythm and there's a flow. But if they play like that, they are going to get burned. But I'm hoping that... When it's time to play the semifinals, they just they rise to the occasion. Jess, we talked about this before the game about Costa Rica probably not deserving to be here, didn't know they were going to be here. Canada, can they play with that type of momentum? Like, we survived a scare, now we, ha now we can just go fl fully fluid forward. I think so. I think they have to. They just have to not overthink this and just go, you know, full force and, and show everyone what they can do. Well, Canada still has not conceded a goal at the W Gold Cup. That is four matches in a row, four clean sheets. They've scored 14. They remain undefeated. They do all the right things, but it was anything but straightforward. It took an Evelyn Vienne header late in the first half of extra time to get the job done, but Canada do advance. And our coverage of the Gold Cup will continue on Brazil and Argentina coming up on the network after the break. But that's it for us in studio. For Jess Lacey, Jordan Wilson, I've been Adam Jenkins. Thanks for watching as Canada advanced past Costa Rica.